Um, so uh, typically, uh, as I always do and have trouble in, at this very institution doing throughout my academic career, I looked at all the questions, understood 50% of the meaning, uh, picked the words I knew, and then answered those. <laughs> Winning strategy! <laughs> Uh, so I was, I was thinking a lot about, uh, I guess, all the adjectives involved in, in this panel, and I guess I'm going to actually mostly talk about adjectives. I'm an English major, um, and I'm not even going to talk about like anything really like very English major. I'm going to pick adjectives. Um, queer, theater, leader. Uh, woman, all of those things, they sort of took way longer than those words should have taken to think about. And um, one of the reasons is because thinking about theater and performance, uh, queer theater and performance, uh, we're going to internally be having the question about what is a queer aesthetic and what is a queer politic and what is queer theater. Um, the same question that we've had about what is black theater, what is indigenous theater, what is tall people theater. I made that up, but it's a thing now. Prove it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for me, the question always comes down to what is the relevance of uh, gender or sexual preference when you're not talking about sex, essentially. So where does where does queerness reside? Um, and what is the breadth of the parameters that are included in queer? Uh, and I can uh, apply the same questions to theater as um, hybridity of form becomes a much broader practice and you'll hear uh, occasionally conversations about whether this thing is theater or not. It's really just make air and use up time, I guess. So the question for me of um, what is a queer politic or what is a queer aesthetic can go on forever in an extremely boring way. And instead, I think um, we should each of us be defining our own personal politic and aesthetic and um, refuse to be held as representative of an entire community, because that's ludicrous. Um, I think that some of the things, uh, for me, that inform that politic and aesthetic, uh, bless you, include uh, looking at your, looking at the ratio, and this, I, I, I will often speak about this as being applicable to other communities you're representative of because it's so layered and complex for all of us. Balancing the extent to which you are speaking to, for, and from your community with the extent to which you feel compelled to explain yourself and your community to people who may or not, may not be interested in that information. Can you say that again? Sure. Um, defining your personal ratio of to what extent you want your work to speak to your community, from your community, and for your community, or those who you feel are aligned with you, versus how much time you want to spend explaining and defining yourself for, for people who are outside of your community and may or may not be interested in hearing that. Um, and, I would, and I say that the, defining your own ratio because there's value in both of those things, and one of those things, I hope to God someone's doing my share of. Um, I think one of the, the important aspects of my politic in this regard uh, has to do with not, not becoming comfortable, and by which I mean not becoming comfortable being the least comfortable people in the room. That uh, when we're producing art that is a form of resistance from an Im uh, embattled community, it becomes possible to uh, slip into complacent embattlement, and that's what allows us to not notice um, new battles beginning, um, and that we are perhaps not productively contributing to, or in fact, actively damaging. Um, so the difficulty for me in defining queer politics and aesthetic has a lot to do with the shifting lines of what's considered conventional and what it takes to queer that what's considered contained within the brackets and what it takes to broaden those brackets to be more inclusive of more identities. What things are considered to exist because they are defined and documented and what things we need to start writing down. Um, and, and I constantly remind myself of the importance of not replicating structures of oppression because uh, in almost every revolution we've seen people throw people out of the big house so that they can live there. 
and that's what we have to try very hard not to do. Um, I also think about reminding myself that my value is not in my adjectives. Um, so that whether or not I announce all of my adjectives, I'm still being them, I'm still seeing the world and speaking the world through that lens and that that's relevant and valid. Um, and that sometimes I have a flag and sometimes I don't and that's always only up to me. Uh, I give myself permission to not be my adjectives. I'll also, my adjectives are friggin' awesome and I'm really proud of them and I give myself the right to speak them anytime that I want and to be any permutation of my many adjectives in any given time and space that I choose and to allow other people to do that as well. Uh, my practice of art is focused on making space where, uh, where there is resistance, occupying the space, broadening the space and offering it to other people, to other voices. And I think that this is sort of our, our joint and collective work. If you feel that you've started outside of the brackets and worked your way in, do not get comfortable. Never get comfortable. The most comfortable place to sit in my house is the place from which I do not move. And we cannot afford to not move. So don't get comfortable. What's my time like? You've still got about three minutes if you want it. Oh yeah, I'll just wrap a little bit. Yeah, that'd be great. It's always super cool when someone announces, I'm gonna wrap a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so I work with a uh, fantastic artist, uh, Pamela Gilmartin, and um, I was an admirer of, her for, of hers for quite a long time before I began to collaborate with her, so I'm like, I guess bragging. <laughs> uh, and now we play in a band together. Anyways, I, I, why do I mention that? To acknowledge that I'm gonna perform my verse uh, from her song, Flavor. Um, yeah, I guess could, because she's probably the first person that inspired me to say anything out loud in that way about identity. When I say born to be different, I'm being euphemistic, because the truth is enough to make some folks ballistic. Did you know that discomfort is how we grow? And listening to each other is how we know? I'm in your family, your church, and your workplace. Human variation all across the Earth's face. I could explain, but I really shouldn't have to. I'm just going to live my life, homie. How's that grab you? Now, there are people who will say almost anything. Watch Fox News. The proof is in the pudding. Let me tell you about assholes and opinions. Original thought. You can't beg, borrow, steal, or win one. I said I like who I like, and I might just be inclined to bust rhymes if it's right. Just mind your, just, just mind your business with my heart and my parental fitness. Don't you worry about the state of my union. Me, I go take rights. Them must soon come. Excuse me as I taste this flavor. Now let me help you understand my behavior. I love against all opposition. I love like it's a God-given mission, a superstition, an oracular vision. My love is an incurable heart condition. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.